and a punishment for the actions that have occurred. And so I have done so. Ms. Carter, please stand. Ms. Carter, a guilty finding having entered on the indictment charging you with the involuntary manslaughter of Conrad Roy III, now sentences you to two and a half years in the Bristol County House of Correction. 15 months of said sentence shall be deemed a committed sentence and the balance thereof shall be suspended until August 1st of 2022. You will be on probation administrative until you are released from incarceration, supervised thereafter, and the date of probation commences today. While you are on probation, there will be the usual conditions of probation, which include that you will obey all court orders and all local, state, and federal laws. You will report to your probation officer as that individual directs. You will allow the probation officer to visit in your home or school with or without notice. You will notify your probation officer within 48 hours if you change your residence, school, or employment. You will report to your probation officer within 48 hours after you are released from incarceration. You will not leave Massachusetts unless you get permission of your probation officer and sign a travel permit. You are required by virtue of your conviction to submit a DNA sample, and that will be done through the probation department. You will sign all releases as necessary for probation to verify your compliance with its terms, and you will pay all court audit fines, costs, and assessments. Those are the general terms. There are, in addition, specific terms. You are to have no contact with any member of the Roy family, excepting only that as may be necessary in conjunction with any civil litigation, including but not limited to the matter of a state of Conrad H. Roy III versus Michelle Carter, docket number 17-0846. You will have no contact, direct or indirect, with any of the civilian witnesses who testified at this trial, excepting only Dr. Bregan. This shall include, but not be limited to, Ms. Samantha Boardman, Ms. Alexandra Eblen, Ms. Ali Ethia, Ms. Olivia Mosoglo, pardon me, and Thomas Gamble. Upon your release from incarceration, you shall present yourself within 48 hours to the Bristol County Juvenile Court Probation Department, Taunton Division, and thereafter shall follow all regulations as indicated by that probation department as to reporting requirements. When you report to probation, you will arrange through probation to schedule a mental health evaluation, which will be done by our juvenile court clinic. Said evaluation shall be for the purpose of addressing areas of need as to any mental health issues and to make recommendations for the treatment thereof. You will be required as a condition of, her proba of your probation to cooperate with that evaluation and to follow those recommendations. A copy of the evaluation shall be provided to the probation department, but shall not be filed with the clerk's office. You shall also sign releases of information providing for any service provider from whom you are receiving services related to the mental health treatment to probation, allowing probation to receive information as to your attendance, the purpose and goals of your counseling, a general statement as to your cooperation with that service, and progress toward the stated goal. Said mental health services shall continue for as long as ne deemed necessary while you are on probation by the clinician or individual providing same. This court further orders, and this will be in writing, all of this is in writing, this court further orders that any disclosures made by Ms. Carter during the mental health evaluation or the treatment recommended may not be used in any substantive way at any subsequent evidentiary hearing that may occur relative to this matter to establish any of the elements of any crime, including this indictment, in the event that for whatever reason it is retried. Based upon this court's analysis, trial. that to some degree, and drawing on Dr. Bregan's testimony, 
that he spoke in terms of behavior of grandiosity. And this court's assessment that for whatever reason, part of the motivation for this activity that led to your conviction was a sense of self-aggrandizement. This court now orders that you are not to profit from the events of which you now stand convicted and the facts surrounding same. For those counsel, I refer you to the case of Commonwealth versus Power, 42010, 410, and the cases that are cited therein from 1995. You, Ms. Carter, your assignees, and any representatives acting on your authority are prohibited from directly or indirectly engaging in any profit or benefit generating activity relating to the publication of facts or circumstances pertaining to your involvement in the criminal act for which you now stand convicted. This shall include contracting with any person, firm, corporation, partnership, association, or other legal entity with respect to the commission and or the reenactment of the crime by way of a movie, book, magazine article, tape recording, recording of any type, radio, television, or internet presentation, interview, live entertainment of any kind, or from the expression of your thoughts, feelings, opinions, or emotions regarding such crime. Any action taken by you, whether by way of execution of a power of attorney, creation of corporate entities, or like, action to avoid compliance with this condition of probation shall be considered a violation of terms and conditions of your probation. As I noted, your probation shall be administrative until you are released from incarceration and thereafter shall be supervised. The probation supervision fee is waived. A victim witness fee in the amount of $45 is imposed and it shall be paid on or before September 11th of 2017. And finally, as I noted a moment ago, you will be required and must submit a DNA sample in accordance with General Laws Chapter 22B. That is the sentence of the court. You may be seated. Mr. Catalo, do you wish to be heard? You may. <laughs>